what's going on guys today we're continuing on with the g season g unit reviews here we're going to be taking a look at the hg gundam elo booster in the last review we took a look at the Aesculapia, so check that out if you missed it but just a reminder to you guys that g season is the hashtag that we're using during this summer to share anything g related g unit uh, reconquista and g G Gundam, uh, anything like that. If you're working on something, share anything online, use that hashtag, and we can all check out, see what everybody's working on that's G season related. So the LO booster, or as I was young, I always thought it was called just the low booster, but I was just reading the Japanese there, it says LO booster. Anyway, whatever you want to call it, it's got some big claw weapons that really remind me of the Zoys, the Genosaur, Geno Breaker, which was the one that has the big claws on the side. It looks exactly like that. They're like shields. It also have big claws that act as like energy weapons as well too, so it's a pretty cool design. And then just like the Aesculapius, this one also does have a transforming gimmick as well, also probably not going to be very impressive like the Aesculapius as well, but it does transform and it's sort of interesting looking, so once again, this just got that cool box art, this one as well, just from back in 1997, so it's a pretty old HG, and uh, let's take a look at it. And so again, because this is the recent reproduction run of this, it's got the blue Bandai logo down there in the corner and the Gundam W, I guess Gundam Wing Comics G-Unit series logo up there at the top. Those are just changes to the box art from any previous runs of the kit. Down on the ends, you've got the, just the 03 as this is the third kit in the line. And then over on the side, you can see a painted sample of what the kit is going to look like front and back, all painted up. It's got the big claws, it's got those big binder boosters things on the back there sticking out. It's got just the shield, the rifle, kind of standard armaments there as well. Looks very cool. And then here you can see the transformed mode there. It's just sort of like, uh, it's just sort of like got the backpack closed up and it's just laying down and flying. So it's not really much of a transformation. There's that and a little bit about the beam sword and the beam rifle there as well. And then around on the other side, once again, an advertisement for the rest of the HG line, just focusing here on the Gundam 04 in the line, which is the Hydro Gundam, which we will be taking a look at next, so stay tuned for that if you're interested in that one. I know that's a personal favorite of mine that I've never built up before, so I'm looking forward to that. But for now, let's take a look at the LO booster. I'm really looking forward to this one as well. And that's the great thing about, I'm glad that I'm finally able to take a look at these because the Aesculapius I've built long time ago, but it was the only one from the series that I ever actually got the chance to build up. And the other ones, I like the designs, they're pretty interesting, but I've never really built any of them before other than the Aesculapius, so I'm really excited to be able to check these out and share them with you. So, let's see what we got. So inside here we've got three bags of runners and our instruction manual. So on the front of the manual, this one as well, just sporting a nice big photograph of the painted sample build, so that's good reference. If you wanted to paint it up in the official colors and everything, you can just get a good look at where everything is, so that looks pretty nice. On the back, a, another look at the transformed mode, and you can see that uh, there it is from the bottom. It doesn't really look like much except for just a gun and flying like that. It looks kind of silly. And then down here, just a photograph of the back, the back side of this photo here. And then we got our color guide there as well. I'll just note that what's up with the eyes on that? Why the eyes look so bad? Okay, anyway, opening it up to the inside, and like with the Aesculapius, we've got just some more information over here about the LOB, the low booster, or the LO booster, and it's just the photograph once again of just the transformed mode and then some detail shots down here about the weapons and everything over here the comic file about some of stills there or just images from the manga and the pilot character there I guess as well which looks very similar to duo Maxwell I'm gonna I gotta say and then you got just a nice illustration there which looks great as well so a really nice illustration reference in case again you wanted to take this kit and modify it to look a little bit more like the line art this is a good reference image to use for that then it's turning the page to the parts list here. You've got your parts laid out, and then the rest of this is just going through the construction, all of that leading up to the final assembly, how to use the kind of claw binders, and then how to do the transformation. It's a pretty simple there, as you can see. Let's take a look at the runners. So here is the foil sticker sheet, and it's not quite as large as the Aesculapius, but it's still pretty massive. So you got a lot of color correcting stickers on here, but again, it's a 1997 high grade, so that's kind of to be expected. We got the eye stickers. Uh, I think a couple of camera stickers on there and then some dark maroon and white and gold stickers on here as well. And also like with Aesculapius, and what I think is going to be a general theme of these is that they do also come with some marking stickers here as well. So it's got its own like cool custom logo marking there and then these other ones are just sort of a little bit more generic caution markings but those are nice to be included in there also. 
And then once again, PC115 for our polycaps here in gray, including the polycap hands. So pretty interestingly, and I didn't notice about these kits, but the A1 and A2 runners are the same between this and the Aesculapius, at least. So this is the A1 runner, and it's the same, it's just all in different colors. So you got white, red, and then the beam sabers are clear pink instead of clear orange. And once again, the handles are molded in together with the effect parts, unfortunately. And the A2 runner here as well, just like with the Aesculapius, is in two different colors. But instead of light blue and white, it's white and dark blue, or just kind of a standard blue. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of dark blue there for these parts down at the bottom. Burner B here in white is certainly different. It's unique to this particular kit, especially. So you got parts for the legs, the head, the claws, and all that, the shields, and all that here in white. And then runner C1 is all of our parts here in dark red, and they look pretty nice. And then we do also have runner C2 as well, which is just the parts here for the beam rifle, just the two halves of that that will just be sandwiched together for the rifle. So while these kits certainly are old and need a lot of work, I'm quite excited. This one actually looks pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to get this, getting this one put together. I think this one as well is going to have a pretty cool look to it while it definitely needs some work it should be pretty awesome looking so i'm gonna get this all built up and then we'll check it out all right so i'll put together here he is looking very cool this one as well like with Aesculapius, i gotta say the design of the gundam is very cool uh, in model kit form of course is still basically having the same pros and cons as the Aesculapius also had uh, it does have a lot of really nice detail on there although i feel this one maybe not quite as detailed in certain areas but i think it's also just due to the design of it of course it is also going to be sharing the same flaws as well and all of these kits in this series are they're basically going to be the same in terms of their pros and cons. Uh, the main flaws is just going to be, of course, with the lack of or just the uh, subpar articulation, let's say. Uh, lots of color correcting stickers and lots of seam lines all over the, the kit, uh, kit. So all those things considered, it's still a really cool design and the gimmicks of this one are quite interesting as well, too. So let's get into it. So let's just start off first off by going through once again where all the stickers are. So once again we got one red one there on the top of the head, the eyes, the chin piece, there's a sticker on there, stickers for the front chest vents here, sticker for the red jewel there on the bottom of the crotch, sticker on the front of the knees, sticker on the side of the legs. On the binders here on the side, you got a red sticker on that fin there, and then around here on the back, white sticker, white sticker, white sticker, white sticker on all the white parts there on the backpack, basically. And then once again, I did put the marking stickers on here as well. The marking stickers on white plastic look fine, on the darker red plastic, though, of course, those are not going to be looking that great, but, you know, you have some marking stickers included with this that you can use there if you want to. There's another one there on the inside of the leg. And the articulation is going to be basically the same as the Aesculapius, so like the head movement here up and down, you've got like a tiny bit of that, but not really a whole lot. In the torso section, there's basically nothing except for just a little bit of rotation here side to side. The arm is just plugged on via a peg, so that can basically just rotate around like that. You can bring the arm out, and this one you kind of have to move this part, and this backpack keeps wanting to fall off. I think the pegs on this backpack could have stood to be one or two millimeters a little bit longer to help that stay on the backpack, but anyway, since we're on the topic of the backpack, let's just switch to talking about that. These parts here will move up and down for the transformation. They can also just open up like this here, if I can get this open, there we go. So it's basically meant to just be open like that, I suppose, when it's just active and flying around whatever but otherwise you can keep those closed here but yes as we were saying about the arms if you move this part up and out of the way you can get the arm out a little bit more but still going to be about to maybe 90 degrees uh, almost and that's about it as far as the outward movement there of the arm you have rotation here at above the elbow and the elbow joint can give you about 90 degrees for that and then once again the wrist is just on a ball joint here it's just the polycap hands for that now as for this binder part here this can obviously rotate like that as you can see this part also opens out like that and then so that's meant to just be sort of this laser cannon out like that I suppose and you do have some pretty nice detail up inside there but once again like with the Aesculapius you have that interrupted by you can see the circles there of like the mold uh, injection pins or anyway those mold parts of the mold that push the part out like that so you can see the little circles not so bad in here but there is a nice some nice detail that's kind of interrupted by that these parts don't move at all those are just fixed in place like that so you'd have to modify those to change if you wanted to articulate these to like open up more or something down here the skirt armor will move up and down a little bit the side skirts will also move up and down the back skirt will not move it's just fixed in place there the legs are attached at the hips via just a ball and socket joint so those are going to be able to move out to about there not that much 
and then ultimately up to maybe once again like with the shoulders almost 90 degrees you got a double joint here in the knee which will still only really give you about 90 degree bend there at the knee also no uh, no separate armor here for the ankle armor it doesn't seem like it's maybe maybe it's supposed to be kind of attached with the lower leg but it kind of looks like I'm not sure whether it's supposed to be attached or not but it is attached anyway the foot is just one big solid red block that will move up and down a little bit like that it's just on a ball joint here as well so you can just move that a little bit side to side as well so a little bit of movement there in the ankle as for the transformation of this all you got to do is just uh, fold those to the front and lay them down like that and there you go it's transformed this is the transformed state of that basically I mean you could straighten it up the angles a little bit make it look a little nicer but Essentially, that's all there is to the transformation, so it's a pretty silly one, but I guess if you wanted it to transform, I mean, from the top, I mean, it looks pretty goofy. From the bottom, it just doesn't look like anything at all, it's just a Gundam, like, laying, like, planking or something. As for his accessories, we've got the same beam sabers that we got with the Escalapias. So instead of being orange this time, they're just in clear pink, so they have to mask and paint off the handles there on those. And then the beam rifle, just two pieces put together. You don't have any sticker or anything for the camera for that, so I might want to just cut out a little piece for the camera. But once again, some nice detail, but of course it's just got a seam line all the way through the middle of that. And then the shield here with the marking sticker for that. Again, some pretty nice detail on that. And then on the back, this is where you're going to plug your beam saber handles in. So you could modify those, I suppose, as well. Just use these handles and this beam effect just cut off the uh, handle there of the clear part and then maybe just use like a piece of one millimeter aluminum rod to cut and then just like drill a tiny bit into that to keep it into there I don't know it could be something that you could do I think it'd be a lot easier to just mask and paint this though but the shield and beam rifle just fit right into the hands really easily and there you go so basic but some cool accessories there and so before we try out some action poses here with this as best we can here it is with the Escalapius and the just the two of these I mean these kits look so cool together I gotta say I mean obviously just snapped up built out of the box with the stickers and everything I mean like they're looking pretty basic and they look like old kits for sure but you can still I mean as I mentioned a bunch in the review of the Escalapias there's a lot of potential here if you took the time to really do these kits up well I mean just two three four of these I mean if you get the whole set it could look cool as well but even just a couple of these all painted up nicely together are gonna look really super cool on the shelf so again essentially with this one you're not gonna be able to do a ton of really super dynamic poses with this but you can pull off some poses and it definitely can look pretty all right I mean you can see certain things that guy definitely give away the age of the kit like just the gaps and the joints seeing the different polycap joints very obvious and out in the open the seam lines of course the inability if you're doing any sort of like wide spread leg stance the feet not being able to sit flat on the ground so like these kind of things just make it very obvious and show its age but even just the ability to pull off a handful of simple poses that do look pretty cool I gotta say and I think it's not all bad especially considering the price point for this being like less than 10 bucks basically it's certainly not a bad kit again there's a lot of nice detail on there I think if you took the time you know, got rid of the seam lines there's some seam lines basically like running across the top of the shoulder which is a pretty simple one it looks like across the top of the shoulder armor there uh, down the front and back of the legs of course uh, as you might expect down the front of the forearms and back of the forearms I should say front and back of the forearms so I mean the seam lines on this one I think really wouldn't be all that bad to get rid of compared to some of the other ones in the line I think the ones for this skin in particular would be pretty simple actually I think for me personally I would probably like to also go ahead and adjust some of the proportions a little bit I really love the head design of this but the head does seem a little bit large for the design so I think maybe either making the torso a little bit larger or trying to make the head a little bit smaller although head modification like that not the easiest thing to do but just this kit's design definitely has a really cool style and then like the shield binders with the big claw cannon things in there are super cool again really reminds me of the zoids I think the Geno breaker I think it is right that has those big sort of very similar weapons and it's also red uh, similar to like the main color of this Gundam or at least the main color of this Gundam's equipment anyway so again just for the price definitely think this is one worth picking up if you like the design it's gonna take a little bit of work but I think if you're willing to put that in or I mean even if you're not it doesn't look that bad I mean just straight out of the box it certainly so it certainly shows its age but it's still a pretty cool design I mean just do a little bit of panel lining on it give it some top coats you know just some matte top coat just to make it look less just plasticky and I think, I mean, it'd be fine looking just straight out the box, you know, all things considered. So that's going to be it for round two of these four G-Unit kit reviews. So up next, we're going to be taking a look at the Hydra Gundam and then followed by the Gundam Grip. So stay tuned for those reviews coming up very soon. Uh, subscribe, guys, if you haven't, so you don't miss that stuff. And as always, thank you so much for your support 
course. Uh, if you guys do have any other further questions or comments about this kit, of course, feel free to leave those down below. And again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support as always as well. Guys, check the link down to USA Gundam Store down in the video description below. And that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you're all doing well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.